welcome to the Construction Record Podcast. I'm digital mediator Warren Fry, and this is our fourth and final pod from Con Expo in Las Vegas. In this episode, I have interviews with Dave Bolderoff, the fleet manager at Los Angeles County Sanitation Districts. His Con Expo session was called How Gen Z Eats Sustainability for Breakfast, and I talked to him about how his organization uses its commitment to sustainability to attract Gen Z talent. I also spoke to Komatsu Director of Customer Solutions, Jason Ansberger, about his Con Expo session, Digital Transformation on the Job Site about how construction is using not only high-tech solutions like autonomous heavy equipment, but also deep integration of every step of the construction process to increase efficiencies and connect everyone on a job together. Here's my interview with Dave Bolderoff, followed by the interview with Jason Anster. I think we should start with I'm, our audience. I, I'm Gen Z. I'm not clearly not Gen Z, I'm Gen X, the other one with a the letter. Uh, there's millennials and boomers listening to this too. Maybe define what Gen Z is to those who don't really know. Yeah, me too. I'm on the, the tail end of Gen X as well. So um, so what Gen, when Gen Z is, is generally um, in the age group of 11 to 28 years old. They were born in the period of 1995 to 2012. And these are the people that are currently entering the workforce. Mm -hmm. And so what they want is clearly different from what other generations want, although some of this ties in with what millennials want too, from what I can tell. Um, but you, you kind of elucidated what it is they're looking for, and a lot of it has to do with sustainability and environmentalism far more than previous generations, even millennials. That's correct. I mean, they really care about the future, I think, is, is an important thing. They want to kind of buy products that are sustainable. They want to kind of work for companies that actually care about the environment. Um, they want to kind of feel like they're doing some good. Um, so they align themselves up with things they buy or even um, companies that, that they want to um, work for. They want to kind of align with the same values that they have. So that's, I think, very important with the employment decision. Mm -hmm. I think what I also highlighted was it's a very competitive market out there. So with the competitive market, it seems like uh, the employee has the, the driving power mm -hmm. here. So they're not getting pushed into a certain job that they don't want. They, they can kind of step back and say... I want to work for this industry or I want to work for this employer because you know they align with my values, they really care about the environment. I can uh, honestly say the work I do is actually doing this, um, you know, doing a better good for you know, future generations. And uh, working with the sanitation district, you said that previously their not motto but their sort of underlying principle was out of sight, out of mind, very efficient. Which I might add is very much a Gen X way to yes. do things. <laughs> um, so, but uh, you changed that around. You made it much more visible that you're sustainable. So maybe you could explain how the district did that. Yeah, like I said, you know, we managed the waste for 5.5 million people in Los Angeles County. So that was never sexy, um, and it was obviously considered a, a bad thing. No one wanted to know what mm -hmm. happened to their waste, um, either um, sewage or trash after it left their house. They just wanted it out of sight, out of mind. So half of us you was to kind of keep it all uh, incognito and not um, tell people what we're doing. But then we realized we could actually turn these waste resources, these waste um, products, either being sewage or um, trash, mm -hmm. into renewable resources or reusable resources. So we kind of focused on that and really kind of told the story around that. We recycled a lot of water. We kind of extracted the methane gas from the wastewater process or the landfill, and either converted that into a CNG or RNG um, useful uh, fuel source, or um, you know put it into turbines and converted it into electricity that could power the neighbourhood mm -hmm. and or operate all our own facilities off the grid. And one other thing you did is made it much more visible. There's a lot more branding and, and uh, logos and, and what have you, telling the county that we are green and, and here's how. Yeah, and I think that was important to us because um, we really saw that in the employment process. People like, you know, we'd reach out to people, come work for us, and they're like, well, who are you? You know, what do you do? Like, you know, and people want to, people aren't just going to take your word for it. They want to look at your website. They want to look at your social media reels and see, well, what are these guys actually doing? What are they really about? Are they just talk or are they actually taking action mm -hmm. and doing good things for environment? So I think it's the important thing is to kind of, take these photos or document um, your facilities, um, your people, what they do, and kind of really get it out there and highlight that, and, and like a clear trail, so it's not just talk, it's, it's action. And, and you also said uh, video was a key to recruitment, which is definitely a change from back in the day when yeah. it was go on LinkedIn yeah. maybe, and, or just give them paper yeah. a resume. Now, 
video is sort of attracting people into it, and it's short video too, you say. Yeah, so I mean, I think the problem is there's, there's so many jobs out there, and everyone's trying to compete against each other, all these industries as well. I mean, people from the tech space are competing against the construction industry, so you've got to kind of stand out and make yourself um, more attractive. And I, and I think you've got to align to like how do um, this Gen Z or millennials like, consume content? Mm -hmm. They've got a very short attention span, so sometimes instead of like, looking at a traditional written job description, getting that into a video format is something that they'll consume faster and actually really jump on. So that's a way to maybe um, stand out from your competition mm -hmm. or other industries as well. One other thing you mentioned was that, uh, uh, which was counterintuitive to me, is that they want a hybrid work environment. They do want to work from home, but they also want to be in the office at times. Um, and you kind of went into the reasons for that. Yeah, I, I think it's that flexibility. Um, they don't want to be, you know, a nine to five type job is no longer, um, you know, attractive to them. You know, and I think part of that is, you know, getting a job done, not being bound to like, you know, a time interval. Mm -hmm. You know, you might not be the most productive during nine to five. You know, people, you know, are productive at certain times of the day. So I think it's trying to tap into that um, productivity and make sure at the end of the day, job should be, you know, about a, a description and getting that, that project or task done, mm -hmm. not necessarily showing up nine to five. Right. So it's, it's trying to figure out that, but then work within your own employment requirements, um, you know, a human resource requirements to make sure that people are still accountable, but, you know, it's like how can they, those two things align mm -hmm. and, and still achieve your overall goal. Uh, and a person, a Gen Z person aged 18 in the audience made a very good point. We're still going to colleges, so maybe that's where you should be recruiting, and he doesn't see a lot of that. So um, maybe you could speak to that, like, looking yeah. in that area. And obviously I think it's based on geography that's, that's different in certain mm -hmm. areas, but we're definitely seeing a lot more... Um, particularly large companies are really seeing that um, going to, it's not really colleges always, it's more so, you know, get in at a younger age. It's, mm -hmm. it's even like high schools or middle schools and really start planting the seed. Um, these people need to kind of see these things over time, not just, you know, at college, they've already kind of like, you know, maybe made a decision or, you know, have a, a kind of direction they're willing to go. But if you can kind of plant that seed earlier on in, in their school term, um, you know, that would maybe kind of open people's minds and then like maybe set themselves up of what, what units they're taking in high school um, mm -hmm. before they even enter college or maybe even take a trade school route. I mean, people want to know that there's good jobs at a trade school uh, level. So bringing back some of these trades into schools and kind of mm -hmm. opening up their eyes to kind of some of these manual type um, jobs rather than computer tasks. And finally, um, I said Los Angeles Sanitation District has kind of done a public revamp. Maybe uh, could you tell people where to go to look and see how you've done it to maybe follow your example? Yeah, I mean, you could either go to our, our website, lacsd.org, um, or, you know, we're on Facebook, um, LinkedIn, um, Twitter, things like that, and, and see the types of posts that we make. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think those, those are all good opportunities to see what we've done. Um, Great. Thanks for joining us today. Okay. Thank you. The presentation was three themes, current challenges, what you can do now, and then what we're going to be able to do in the near future. So let's start with the challenges. What are some of the challenges on the site? You mentioned people using pen and paper. Probably should rethink that. You got it. Yeah. With uh, today, there's so many technologies available. If you are still using pen and paper, that's kind of an indicator that you're not using the latest uh, you know, apps or uh, digital tools like drones or even machinery that has that data collection capability built into it. So mm -hmm. that is a good indicator that uh, there might be something or some process that you can't uh, update. And it seems like the main challenges are that everything's analog, it's not connected, and this is still prevalent in the industry, people using traditional equipment with no brains on them. Oh, you got it. Yeah, you talk to any contractor, they can probably tell you about some pain point or some solution or process they have uh, that requires manual input or doesn't easily transfer data between uh, step A to step B. So we really think there are these opportunities today from uh, industry as a whole mm -hmm. that can be adopted by contractors to minimize that pain point. They just got to go looking and, uh, yeah, they're out there. One thing I found interesting about the presentation was that um, you know, often when you see these future construction things, it's all the glamorous stuff. Like, you look at this gizmo. But this is more about the efficiencies and the sort of, sort of the back-end stuff. Like, that's where you connect all that together. That's where the efficiency comes from. Oh, uh, 100% correct. Uh, a lot of people think, of, you know, future construction is uh, autonomy. And, of course, it's, it's going to go there eventually. Mm -hmm. But what good is autonomy if you don't have good systems or data flow or, or ways to manage that machinery or, or your business as a whole? So it often comes down to that work that is not so glamorous, but 
the planning, excuse me, the planning, the scheduling, the measuring, the understanding of where the business is at, where the job site is at, and what we can do quickly to address it and drive out waste. Yeah, you know, one of the things you really stressed was uh, mapping out terrain digitally. And you also said if you aren't using drones, you should be, <laughs> because, because they do so much more than just take pictures. Yeah, someone like me that's kind of looking to the future, you know, drones are almost old news, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've been dealing with drones forever, but there are so many contractors that are still either haven't looked at it or they did initially and had a bad taste in their mouth and haven't adopted it uh, consistently in their operations. So we would challenge everyone to take another look at that technology as an example because it is really through pro, it is bringing value to operations and just an example of something like that. Uh, and you also said that uh, pretty much anything sh sh should be capable of mapping terrain. Um, uh, like you said, basically, a nail truck can pretty much do this, can not just do uh, telematics, but they can also do, sort of geospatially uh, map all the terrain you're going to be working on. Yeah, definitely any machinery with, a, let's say, grade control technology that has some automation or high precision GPS, not only can they use that to move the earth, but they can also use it to map the earth and report that. So, yeah, that definitely is a uh, low hanging fruit opportunity that people don't know about, but even again, smartphones or something, just tracking location of workers or uh, vehicles, whether, you know, dump trucks, street trucks, whatever, that can all be super beneficial to help you uh, calculate cycle times or get a better handle on your production. You don't have to do things the old school way with pen and paper or clickers. Um, there's a digital way to track that and get that data easier. And you also said that automation um, you know, is touted as the future, but it's actually the present, and in mining's case, it's the past. Correct, yeah, we can look to mining to see uh, an example of the future. And now, construction is different. Uh, is a little bit messier, a lot more people on the sites. They're not uh, mm -hmm. surrounded by a fence uh, way out in remote areas often um, and working with a lot of different, uh, let's say, subcontractors and personnel. So they are different, but uh, yeah, this idea of running a tighter ship using data to drive our operations and uh, making the decisions based upon fact, not gut. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we can look at the mining and see that that is the right path forward for construction. And, and another thing you pointed out was that um, pretty much nobody's working construction as a nonprofit. <laughs> like they're, they're there to be more productive and they're there to better cost efficiencies. And also when you're bidding, the next time you're bidding, you have all this data you can point to as opposed to, ah, it worked like this last time, maybe it'll work this time. Yeah, I don't know. Some may Sometimes maybe people think, oh, he's just nerding out, and just because it's cool technology doesn't mean that's what's right for us. All this technology is designed to bring uh, efficiency into the operations, which ultimately you know, results in uh, profitability. So mm -hmm. all this should help a company grow, increase their revenues, and uh, be sustainable from a profit perspective into the future. And, and you also uh, pointed out that um, Efficiency also means like uh, connectivity between people in the back and like in the office and the guys on the sites, which was a problem before. You'd, you'd have a pen and paper thing in a site office that had been changed 15 times over. Well, the guy in the office down the road doesn't know that, but here they do instantly. Yeah, you know, uh, when we're doing a construction job site, it's really who's doing the work, right? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes that person has the most out of date information, which is terrible. Or, we're so distant from them, they're in the field and we're back in the office making decisions. So the more we can uh, use uh, digital assets to connect with them, to share information back and forth to them, then productivity would just increase exponentially. Mm -hmm. And you also said this also allows for the schedule, so you don't get the bottlenecks where somebody calls you at 10 says this thing doesn't work and then you've got a day or two where you can't use it. Now you're going to know a lot quicker and be able to adapt a lot quicker. Yeah, timeliness is uh, everything, time is money, right? So. Um, no one wants to find out they have a problem at the end of the week or the end of the month. Mm -hmm. um, so the quicker you can highlight any issues or opportunities to improve further, the better. So yeah, near real time is uh, the saying today and people should be able to measure and find out in the morning and take uh, action in the afternoon at the very least. And I guess the my sort of final question would be, uh, it's not far future, but like blue sky, where are we going with this besides automation and more efficiencies? Where does, where does that end up big picture? Yeah, I think it's more of just what you see today. Apps for everything, mm -hmm. uh, more IoT devices, things connected to the cloud reporting data, and more and more insightful visualizations. And then machine automation, of course, will continue to advance and increase. Okay, and you mentioned that you were showing real-world Komatsu um, projects in your presentation. Where should people go on the Komatsu site to see stuff like this, to sort of future visioning? Yeah, on the Komatsu website, there's an area called uh, Smart Construction or Smart Quarry, and you'll see all these uh, job site related technologies, both on machine and off machine. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you.
Thanks again for following our podcast for this past four days at Con Expo in Las Vegas. And make sure to tune in Tuesday for our pod special on Construct Connect's new takeoff boost technology. Also, make sure to keep checking the daily commercial news and journal of commerce for our Con Expo daily notebooks and stories from the conference over the next couple weeks. Thanks for listening. 